Hi, I'm Tamar, and this is Donna, and we're the Dapple co-founders. We're here today to tell you about our story and about launching, running, competing as observant women in the world of big corporations. I know that many of you in this room are at different points in their career. Some of you have already launched into successful businesses. Some of you are at the point of ideation. And we're really looking forward to exchanging stories with you and speaking with you as the morning progresses. But for now, we're going to take you through the Dapple story, our story. Launching, growing, competing, the hurdles, the challenges, the mistakes, and the different opportunities that we've had. I was an attorney at a big corporate law firm, and Tamar was in school for nonprofit. Neither of us was dreaming of starting our own business. Um, but then we saw it, and that was a big, gaping, open white space that we knew we just had to fill. Here's what happened. I was at my sink one morning. It was 2 AM. I was sleep deprived, and I was washing baby bottles. And as I was pouring some fluorescent colored liquid into my bottle, it just hit me. I was so careful with everything that I surrounded my baby with, but the things she put in her mouth every day, I was pouring chemicals in that I didn't even know about. It didn't make sense. Donna called me the next morning, and she wanted to know how I was washing my baby bottles. I have a highly allergic daughter, and it was quite early. I have a highly allergic daughter, and I'm super careful about the different products that I bring into our own home. But the thing was that whatever I was using wasn't working well. After just a couple of uses, my bottles had that awful film and that residue, and they were ruined. I had to reset the bottles. I had to go in and buy new ones. The other problem I had is that most of the natural products on the marketplace contained a nut derivative, some sort of allergen that I couldn't use because of my allergic daughter, and often even had a byproduct that was carcinogenic. So I knew we were onto something here. The two of us got thinking. Four million babies born in the US every year, and not one product that really focused on that cleaning challenge to get rid of the film, the milk, the odor, in a baby-specific, baby-safe way. They say that necessity is the mother of invention. So if you're still looking for your idea, the best place to look is in your own lives. What are you missing? What can you improve on? What frustrates you? How can you make it better? But be careful, the idea that you pick may soon come to define a big part of who you are. So Tamara and I are known as the baby cleaning experts, and I don't even like to clean. <laughs> we have a good friend who started a company called Boogie Wipes. Um, and yeah, you guessed it, it's a wipe to uh, clean little noses. The business did phenomenally well, but the two moms behind the business became known as the schnod experts. <laughs> they embraced it, but not everybody would. So I think the takeaway is this. When you pick your idea, make sure it conforms with your personality and with your beliefs. So now you have your idea, but how do you know it's going to work? Donna and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on professional market research, but luckily, the, the information was available to us. We hung out on parenting forums, in parent chat rooms, and we even spoke to every mom that would listen to us on the playground, at playgroups, on Starbucks line, anywhere we went that there was a mom, we spoke to, wherever it was. We also, you know, it came pretty quickly after all these conversations with different moms, we got a really deep understanding of who our consumer was and how much they would be willing to pay for a product like a bottle wash. Many early stage entrepreneurs that we meet are afraid to discuss their ideas. They think that somebody might steal their idea or that what happens if nothing comes of their plan and then they expose themselves. In our experience, what really drives the business forward is talking to as many people as possible. Of course, you do need a well-drafted NDA, and especially if your idea involves protectable IP, make sure that everybody signs it. But in general, don't be embarrassed to pick people's brains, because most people will be flattered if you ask and happy to help. After we, you know, asking around and just talking, we became pretty confident that we stumbled across a great opportunity here. But was it just a great idea, or was it actually a great business idea? There is a difference. 
Before doing anything, we drew up a, you know, a pretty quick business plan. It's not this 40-page document that you might be afraid to write up. It was merely a quick projection of timelines and costs and how long it would actually take us to get the product from the idea stage to the actual introduction stage. Um, a business plan is an evolving document. It constantly changes. For us, it was important to understand what financial risks we were taking and what the upside would be if we succeeded. So everything checked out and we were off to the races. But then came the great lull. A lot of people we meet, they stop at exactly this early juncture because they're daunted by what the next steps are. Um, for us, it was really life taking over. It was our kids, our other responsibilities. Tamara was still in school, I was still an attorney, inertia took over, and to make matters worse, the year was turning 2008, and the economy had just taken a major nosedive. I really believe that if it wasn't for each other, we would still be stuck in that inertia stage. A huge takeaway that we have is, if you have a great partner, that, you know, the entire experience is uplifted, and it makes everything a bit easier and a bit better. Um, in, it's true. In those early days when either of us were losing steam, the other one would just step in and say, no, but we have to do it and we can do it. And we really strengthened each other's opportunity to move ahead in this great idea that we had. We realized at that point also that creating baby safe cleaners is not a luxury. It really was a necessity, even a soft economic market. And parents are always willing to pay up for baby safety because it's something everyone wants for their children. So we got cracking. So we got cracking, exactly. In order to create our product, we needed uh, financing. We got our seed capital from friends and family, um, and we very quickly networked with a team of pediatricians and green chemists who helped us formulate our first product. We also identified freelance designers to help us create our first label. Um, we took a small and calculated risk and only ran a couple thousand of bottles. Um, just at that time, something very fortunate happened to us. We were watching the Today Show, and they were announcing that Yahoo was giving out a grant to women entrepreneurs, to encourage women entrepreneurship. They were, they were choosing three companies, and on a whim, really, Dapple applied, and we won, which was great, because it came, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, it came with additional seed financing, as well as uh, a free hosting, and a whole host of PR services and help. Um, it was a great boon for Dapple, but it's not as unusual as you may think. Contests and competition of this kind are available each and every year, especially to women businesses. And then there are all other kinds of uh, early stage financing that actually focus on women. Golden Seeds is a great example of a venture, an early venture fund that looks for women entrepreneurs. Um, there are all kinds of uh, crowdfunding sites that have emerged very successfully in the last year, like Kickstarter, Circle Up, and Portfolio is a new one that especially focuses on women as well. One of the biggest challenges in these early stages of building a business is to have people you know, to convince others in your industry that you're onto something and to take a chance on your new venture. It's a great idea in your head, but it's nothing if people don't really accept it. So in our case, we had to get the thousands of bottles that we manufactured onto the shelves of retailers. At that time, we had one particular baby specialty nationwide retailer that we were dead set on getting into. We made phone calls, we sent care packages to the corporate offices, we called managers, we had family members call the corporate offices and request the products, but to no avail. It simply didn't work. Thankfully, and thank God, at that time, we also had an appointment with the other largest baby specialty retailer in the nation, and we succeeded in scoring the shelf opportunity there. A couple months into that relationship, we got a phone call from the chief marketing, the chief merchandising officer at the original baby retailer that we were dead set in getting into, and he said, you have to come to our offices immediately, meet with us, and you know, we, we see a big dapple display in the future, and the future is now. So we met with him, he said, I just have one question for you. Why would you go to our direct competitors instead of coming to us? And I said, well, actually, that wasn't, that wasn't the case. We tried to get into you, and he said, which managers would turn you away? This is a great opportunity for us. So we have since coined that time in Dapple's history, our Cinderella moment. It's at times when things are not going so smoothly that we 
quickly remind ourselves of, of that and give each other strength in what happened then and take it for the learnings moving forward. We have long learned that no is not okay. If there's a door that's closed, we simply just knock harder. So now, we had our first product out. We started gaining traction and we even got our first fan mail, which felt great. But with growth came a couple of very hard questions. How much money exactly do you take in? How much of your business do you give up? Do you go into new categories? Do you make more products? Diapers, wipes for us. Um, our first move in scaling up was to uh, go from local boutique to national. And you know, we were, this was really exciting for us, and we were kind of drunk on our early success from having been uh, in, in the baby stores, and we were thinking it's gonna be easy to replicate that on the national stage. And then came our first big wake up call. Here's what happened. So we had secured a very coveted end cap display um, in 200 stores nationwide. And this was a fully branded, gorgeous um, display just as you walked in and it came with a very hefty price tag. But we had done our math and we figured out that the uptick in sales was easily gonna pay for this end cap. Um, and so the morning of the first day of the promotion, we walked into one of the stores expecting to see our shiny new display. We thought we were gonna see this. Instead, we saw this. Now, <laughs> you can imagine how crestfallen we were. Here, we had just shelled out a lot of money, and I, I don't know if you can see, but Procter & Gamble was actually reaping the benefits of our promotion. If you're in the acceleration stage of your business, you have probably encountered these type of growth pains. Scaling up can be super painful and even very costly if you're not prepared properly. So our lesson here is you just have to be prepared for the growth, not just think about you know, the growth, but you actually have to do things and have plans set in place. Otherwise, it can be extremely detrimental to the growth of your company. For us, help came from very unexpected places. They say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, but we've actually experienced the exact opposite. We found that the, the help came from the other entrepreneurs in our exact space, and oftentimes even moms. They were willing to share their knowledge and insights and their growth pains with us to help prevent the same mistakes that they've had. One of the great programs that we learned from one of the fellow mompreneurs was about a brand ambassador program where you could um, work with local moms in different areas or other people in different areas to go in, check on products, and they were willing to barter this for products and even a small cash stipend. So they would go in, they would visit the stores, they would make sure that our, our end caps were set, they would check that products were in stock, and they would even hand out products and samples to local mommy groups and other moms. Our, for us, what I would really recommend is that you should never be intimidated by the success of, of fellow entrepreneurs. You should talk to them. I would encourage you all in this room to make a wish list of people who you would want to mentor you. And yeah, it's true, some of them won't be helpful or willing to help, but you'll still be able to tap into some people who are willing to help, and soon enough, you're gonna be in the position where you're paying it forward and you're mentoring other, other fellow entrepreneurs. For us, the biggest challenge in growing was redefining our own goals. When we started Dapple, Tamar and I did absolutely everything. We worked with the chemists in formulating our product, but we were also taping boxes, applying for UPC codes, you know, stacking pallets. We were the founders, we were the CEOs, we were the CFOs, the operation managers, the personal assistants, the warehouse people, <laughs> the, you name it, all rolled into one. And at that time, people would always ask us how we defined our roles. And Don and I would just look at each other and smile because we didn't have time to think about how we defined our roles because we were just doing everything. Um, thankfully, and thank God, things did become overwhelming. But we're so thankful for the experience that we had because we have a deep understanding of every aspect of our business, which is extremely important for people who are, who are going and starting. We, we get what it was to have the idea, ideation, and get it actually onto shelves. Um, but things did get overwhelming. Quickly, we, we had to make our first hire, which was, an operation, which was somebody in the warehouse, because at the time that we were launching onto shelves, both of us were pregnant, coincidentally, and it was just too much for us to continue schlepping these heavy dish liquid and laundry detergents to make these pallets ready to ship off to Babies R Us. 
So quickly thereafter, um, other hires happen, logistics manager, sales hire, and we realized that we had great responsibility because people were counting on us. We were paying benefits, and not only that, they were relying on us for their salaries. Um, Furthermore, the issue of letting go was difficult for us because Dapple is, was our baby. And, you know, when you have your baby, there is a sense of control that you have to let up if you're going to continue to build and get to the next level of your business. We certainly made some mistakes in hires, went too fast at times. But generally, I think the rule of thumb when you're thinking about expanding your team and growing your business is look for people who share the same values and, and thoughts as you do, but bring a completely different skill set to the table because they'll complement you and continue to help grow the team in a healthy way. So once we started making our name for ourselves, these guys, remember them? They started noticing. And um, soon enough, there was a palm olive bottle liquid as well. Um, and to make matters worse, a beautiful and very famous celebrity started joining the ranks of our competition and making baby cleaners as well. Uh, these people have very deep pockets and they have huge marketing machines behind them in a very commoditized space that we play in. So how exactly do we compete? It's a two-part answer. It's all about your identity and it's all about your innovation. Stay true to yourself and your core ideals. Staple is a mission-driven business always was and always will be. We wanted to make sure to surround our babies with healthier products and healthier ingredients. That will never ever change. Bigger companies are often hostage to shareholders or even to board members. They need to make certain margins criteria. So yes, sure, we always try to make sure that things make business sense, but we're never willing to cut corners when it comes to baby safety. Our product integrity and you know, our quality is paramount. Our customers know this, they trust us, and they've quickly joined the bandwagon and become loyal to our brand. They trust the real moms behind the business. And because we're at the center of every new product development, we therefore create new products with that mommy insight, that mom's point of view. That's just something that the big guys don't, have not caught on to and can't catch on to because they don't have that mom insight and that deep connection with the people who are actually buying their products. They couldn't establish that authenticity with the people buying their products. So we've seen the bigger guys, the palm olive, the products that they're introducing come and quickly go. No matter what industry you're in, our takeaway for us is that if your business idea is a good one, you'll always have competition. That's, that's a good thing. Competition is a good thing. So go back to your founding ideals. Go back to the reason and the mission that you started your business and stay true to it. Don't compromise and don't imitate. But there's another side to the story as well. Um, once we started to have a competition, we weren't the only game in town anymore. We had to cement our position as innovators in our category. And we had to come out with something that the others didn't have. Um, so for us, that meant refreshing our look and creating new products. Uh, here are some of the results. I hope you like them as much as we do. Um, as a smaller company, you have a big advantage um, in that you're nimble. The big players, they're so slow. They have to jump through so many hoops and layers in order to get things done. You can be fast and innovative. So to the big elephant in the room, how do you run two businesses simultaneously? The one at work and the one at home. As moms, yes, we have not cracked the secret of work-life balance and there is that constant struggle of being able to be in both places at once. But the biggest takeaway that we have is that at either location, whether you're at work or you're at home, you have to fully immerse yourself with your surroundings. You have to say, you're with the kids, try to put away your phone. You're at work, try not to worry about not spending time with the kids because it does, it does all work out. When we started this, we had no idea where it was going to take us and how much of our lives would be defined by what we're doing, but what we do know is that we would do it over and over and over again. So looking around this room, we're actually inspired by all of you and by the speech that Chaya made. We just want to raise a glass, basically, and say, to here, is the, all the, here is to all the women in this room learning from each other and strengthening our position through each other in both the workplace and in our homes. So thank you. Thank you.